we released a new version of SharePoint Lookbook uh, in Ignite uh, last week. So I wanted to make sure that everybody is aware uh, of the functionality and also what's possible related on the Lookbook itself. Lookbook uh, is available in address uh, of lookbook.microsoft.com. And this is really intended to show what kind of beautiful designs you can build using modern SharePoint. Um, and it doesn't actually end there, but let, let me explain uh, what I mean with that one. So we have it uh, like 12 to 13 different templates right now, and we're looking into adding more here as well. So there's the organizational templates like leadership connections, the landing, the new site, the perspective and benefits, uh, department templates, team templates, community templates, and then solutions like the learning pathways uh, can be provisioned uh, from here as well. Now, let's actually do this uh, demo in a kind of a classic demo uh, the perspective uh, is a good template and this is intended or designed to be uh, for example the company landing page uh, in the SharePoint online and this could be easily then uh, switched to the root side of your tenant because all of those PowerShells are available so you could actually modify this to be your template as well. Um, all of the designs in the lookbook designs they, they basically have an example content uh, we use to the Contoso Electronics as the, as the brand, but uh, you can imagine if you flip all of those logos based on your company logos, you can easily make this look uh, relevant for your company as well. Now, the idea of Lookbook is, um, and, and obviously Lookbook is available also as a PDF, uh, so you can actually have a look on the beautiful designs, have a look on what kind of things and what are we thinking behind of the designs, kind of a reasoning uh, behind of the, the models and all of that. Now, for all of the lookbook uh, templates, uh, we also provide uh, internal insights on how it has been built. So as an example, uh, footer functionality. So this one has the, the custom, uh, well, not a custom footer, out of the box footer, which has a logo here. And if you're interested in understanding functionality on that, you can click the links and it opens up the relevant information around that topic. So from our different documentations. So as an example, uh, thank you, Chris, by the way, on the on the awesome picture. Um, as an example, the SharePoint site footer is being covered in this documentation and, and it's linked directly on the lookbook site. So you can easily understand what's possible or what is a vertical section. And then we have a support article explaining what is a vertical section, how does it actually work and what are the dependencies and all of that. So you can easily understand how the functionality actually works in practice. Now, more importantly, it's not just about site features. It's also about which web part has been used. So as an example, we're using a weather web part here uh, in the top right corner and we're using recent documents, we're using sites and for all of these uh, we also link the docu relevant documentation. So as an example, my recent sites is a web part over there on this side of the house and if I click that one I can get more insights on my recent sites web part and what are the options and how, how to high configure that so you learn how the functionality actually works. So what's possible and uh, what are the different layout settings and everything else. Now this is obviously nice. Uh, you can you can read about uh, the functionality. You can read about um, how things actually work uh, based on the documentation. But even more importantly, underneath here we can actually see the most let's say interesting functionality, which is add to your tenant. So you can actually deploy these templates and these templates to your tenant as long as you are a tenant administrator. Now, we're looking into actually reducing that requirement as well in the future. There are unfortunately certain APIs uh, which are demanding still a tenant admin your admin permissions. So this is only for tenant administrators, but you can easily get a, a trial tenant or you can use our Office 365 developer program to get to your tenant and then you're able to actually provision this to be available. Uh, quick point on that one, I'm um, going to quickly jump away from the uh, demo uh, developer program. So if you search for the Office 365 developer program, uh, you can easily find uh, developer program details and that is a free tenant. You can get a free tenant for, uh, for a automatic 90 day renewal as long as you use it for developer purposes and you will be a tenant administrator on this tenant. Even more importantly, it's E5. So it's E5 developer tenant with 25 user licenses. So you can truly test functionalities and build cool looking stuff on that. So if nothing else, if you haven't done this already, subscribe to the program, get yourself a tenant, and then you are a tenant administrator. Uh, so you're able to click to add to your tenant functionality. That will do a consent and application. Uh, so now we, uh, I have already consented this application and uh, to be the need for the needed permission. So it didn't ask me to consent. So the first time when I actually uh, do this, it's going to ask you to consent the needed permissions. Um, but uh, it's nothing more than then 
filling up the form. So based on the selection, like in here, uh, we selected the perspective. We fill out the form with the default values and based on a template and the default URL. If I remember correctly in my tenant, this URL is actually free. So it's going to do validating is the URL free and it is free if it's not free, uh, like uh, uh, if I would try to override an existing site collection, it will warn me. Oh, it will warn me that the site collection URL is already taken. You can still apply on top of it, but the provisioning is not necessarily uh, successful. Um, so we do recommend uh, that you would actually uh, create this as a clean site collection um, because then it's more reliable end result based on the creation. Now, one thing to also notice right now, uh, we have only tested this to work truly in English tenants. So if you have a non-English um, language tenant, uh, that support is coming future on. So we need to make sure that that's working properly in the, in the non-English tenants as well. But again, nothing more than this. Uh, and you can provide an email address to get notified when the provision is completed. You could use your own address. In this case, I'm using the admin address of that particular tenant. So that's it. And clicking provision. It's going to validate the tenant prerequisites. So it's going to check that I am, I'm truly the right permissions and certain and based on a template template, it might actually validate that app catalog exists because that would be required based on a template as well. And then it's um, wanting me to confirm what is getting provisioned and it can take up approximately five minutes to actually complete and click and confirm. And that's it. Within five minutes, I will get an email uh, or if I keep this page open and uh, the tab open, this link will uh, be flipped to be actual link. Uh, and it's going to say provisioning completed, uh, or I will get an email to this email address, which will say that, hey, you have a nice site collection available in the given address. Now, let me actually show you that uh, email just to walk you through the process. So I'm going to go to this tenant. I'm going to go to my, my Outlook. Come on. Here we go. So you'll see how the things are looking. Now, there was a question related on the old dev tenants were E3. That is true. The new AE uh, tenants are E5, and they automatically renew the old tenants. There is unfortunately no transformation of the older tenants to the new model. Um, and I don't think the team responsible of the Office 365 developer program is working on that one, unfortunately. So I don't think that's actually coming, um, unfortunately. But you can uh, subscribe to the program with a new email address, and that that's the easiest way to actually get a new tenant available. Yes, definitely recommending to getting uh, the, the, the new E5. So let me actually try again to go to the Outlook. Or is my network connectivity somehow slow? It is slow. Fine, I'm not going to go to the Outlook then. Now, what you get uh, in a second, and we'll double check that the end result uh, with this one in a second, uh, I'm going to just use the landing, which I already requested or provisioned before as a landing point. Well, in our case, we selected the perspective. So this would be the outcome uh, in my tenant. What I've done also in my tenant is that I actually set uh, the company uh, logo and company uh, uh, settings so that the company profile has the contours of electronics on the top left corner. Obviously, again, it depends on which tenant you're using and what kind of settings you actually have there. Now, um, but this is precisely what you're getting out of that selected template. Uh, you'll get example news articles, example news, example R the documents, even example pictures and all of the, the different things. Uh, the navigation settings and demos are available. So these are exactly the same designs which we as a Microsoft used in our demos in Ignite this year. So you, there's no longer kind of a delay or you don't have to worry about, oh, well, how would I get the cool looking sites which Microsoft is actually demoing in Ignite? Um, this is it. This is how, how we actually created them. So we used in many of the de demos and many of the tenants, demo tenants which we used in Ignite, we actually provisioned them an example content using this provisioning service. Now, there's a lot of, lot of different templates available, like that, and the perspective, the landing, which are intended to be the landing pages, uh, linked to the Yammer uh, and all of those things, uh, marketing sites uh, with example content documents and, and pictures, uh, which are completely open source, and you can use all of these assets any way you want. Um, or uh, conference uh, designs and cool looking pictures and cool looking uh, designs. And the beauty of this one is that it's not just that you'll go to the, let me actually go in, in here. It's not just that you have a look on the how 
the template has been created using this functionality, you can actually go to the site, you can take the page on the edit mode, and that's it. And then you can actually have a look on, oh, that's a, a oh, that's a web part, okay, so what are the settings? Oh, I can have multiple other picture, uh, out of weather things here as well. So let me add here Helsinki, Helsinki, oh, um, actually we have a better weather in than Seattle, wow. Um, and I can flip that to Celsius and Fahrenheit. So you'll have a hands-on experience, what's possible uh, related on the modern experience based on SharePoint. And, and sure, you can use this as a starting point for your own intranet and then start modifying the images and all of that, if that is what you wanna do. They are intended to be used as a demo. Uh, so you'll learn, you'll learn definitely how to, how to create these kind of designs as well. So let me do republish uh, marketing. Uh, there was conference designs. That's pretty cool looking design as well. Communication designs with example documents even. Uh, and all of the documents which were provisioned from here will be then available on from the search. So you can really easily build a cool demo environments uh, using all of these assets which are available as part of these templates. And uh, that's the benefit side as an example. Um, and, oh, and we got an email. Our new provisioning uh, is completed. So let me actually uh, open up that email. There we go. Uh, it came actually as a pop-up. So there is a new link which is saying right now on this moment, uh, the perspective template has been completed. Uh, request the provision, okay, and open site. We will actually open the, that, uh, the perspective URL and we can say the outcome of that provisioning and the selected template. And that's pretty cool, isn't it? Woohoo! If there would be audio uh, on this screen, don't, don't unmute yourself. Uh, it's well kept messy if you do that. Now, um, that's really cool. So you can use all of this to provision call sites. And, and I still remember when I started in Microsoft back in 2006 with SharePoint 2007, and when just GA, the, the number one thing what I had as a consultant was the request on how do I create my demos? This is how we can do demos in 2019. You'll just set up the demo uh, environment, you just set up the, the templates you want, and that's it, then you're good to go. Obviously, you can modify these. You can still go to the site, uh, change the look. Uh, you can modify, for example, the, the theme based on the whatever customer selection or your company selection. So if you prefer that to be orange, you can definitely flip the, flip the theme to be orange. Uh, we can do something like uh, header, Let's do, uh, change the look and header and put the header in orange as well. And voila, we're looking much nicer. So you can really easily use the modern theming capabilities then to set the base colors based on your company colors as well. Which, by the way, Trace is going to show within a few minutes. So don't miss that demo as well. Now, before I actually close up, uh, really cool stuff uh, available. You can provision these as many as you want, as, as many times as you want. Um, you don't have to wait this to complete. You'll get an email and you could just as well go to the site and, and start provisioning as many of the templates to your sample tenant as needed. So there's a multi-training behind of the scenes and as you know, so Azure application. Now, some of you are developers, so you might be interested on, hey, so that's actually really cool. How has the whole thing been built? Ta -da, and that's all open source. So uh, earlier today, uh, we just updated, Paolo Pialoris is, is one of one the person, and we just updated uh, at uh, github.com slash SharePoint SP provisioning service is the URL. We just updated the latest code uh, to be available here. And this is actually how the whole uh, lookbook slash provisioning the SharePoint PMP service has been built. Uh, behind of the scenes, we are actually using two different applications and URLs and all of that. Don't get super confused on that one uh, but there is actually there's the lookbook and then there's a basically a almost an identical sister and which is the SharePoint provisioning service and when we do provisioning in here you actually move between the lookbook URL and the provisioning service but don't get fooled on that. Um, the actual code anyway uh, is available in GitHub as an open source solution so just as well if you or your company or your customer would like to have a customer specific experience which requires authentication to their Azure AD you could actually use this code to get this one up and running and then modify that based on your customer requirements or even actually better so what about those templates what about those templates and assets and images and everything else sure they're all open source as well. They are in uh, github.com slash SharePoint slash SP dev provisioning templates. Thank you, Christian, by the way, for the sample. Let me put the URL on the chat as well. So all of the templates which you saw uh, are available in here. Some of these are actually Lookbook v1 templates and some mo most of them are Lookbook v2 templates. So as an example, uh, the perspective is a template which is in here. The actual template file, oops, now I accidentally flipped. 
actual template file is the perspective BMP in here. Uh, if I go to the source, I can actually see the BMP tenant template, which could actually contain also team structures and, and many of the other structures as well. But this is the actual tenant template behind of the scenes, which you can again modify and repackage. And even better, uh, if we go to the source, uh, you actually get to the assets. So even the documents which are behind of the scenes getting provisioned, everything behind of the scenes is fully open source. So you're able to use any of these things any way you want within your own implementation and hopefully make millions or get super excited on the on the on the modern SharePoint. Now, if you are interested on on what do we use behind of the, the, the engine itself, this is uh, BMP tenant uh, remote provisioning engine. Uh, we have updated the documentation. We talked about the BMP provisioning tenant templates, BMP provisioning templates. All of this documentation has been quite recently updated, so late October, early November. We need to just double check with Irving that we updated actually the, the, date, the date, because some of these dates were looking still older than no, actually, no, that's that's too old. Anyway, uh, I think we updated all of the pages, so we just need to double check that the dates were updated. But this is the documentation which is then explaining what are what is the technology what we're using here, and how does it actually work? And as an example, you can use the PMP tenant templates also to provision team structures. Um, so all of that is getting documented and referenced um, against our schema files. So you can, you can easily learn how to make these things happen. So PMP provisioning schema is explained here. Um, and what are the possibilities and what are the things what you can do in a tenant level, uh, which is pretty cool. But I'm looking under the clock. I could go on and on and on. Um, we're super excited on the on the lookbook, it's lookbook site itself um, and have a look on it. Um, and obviously, one thing maybe still uh, to note here. Um, obviously, in this case, we are provisioning SharePoint uh, structures and SharePoint templates. But it's important to realize that in Microsoft 365 and Office 365, we are pushing heavily, uh, obviously, teams. But you can expose. SharePoint inside of the Teams completely seamlessly. So just as well, uh, you can have and expose uh, the team structures and news functionalities inside of the of the team structure as well. So you can actually operate and and get exposed to the news articles, create news articles, comment inside of the, the articles as well. Even though you, your primary, let's say, working environment or collaboration platform would be Microsoft Teams. So you, you kind of use the the SharePoint as the underlying portal and landing page and all of that. Um, and this is full uh, SharePoint functionality. So we're basically just surfacing the SharePoint uh, in this location. So that's it, what's happening here. And uh, it can actually be at the level of, let me actually show this in the right level. Um, oh, that's the leads application. That's actually our web part uh, and full screen. And here we go. Let's get rid of that one. Now it starts looking quite nice. We're inside of Teams. We can do different things. We can function and see the news, we can create the news even uh, using these functionalities, which is really, really cool. But that's it from my side. So uh, that was a quick introduction on Lookbook. I wanted to go through what's available, how does it work, uh, what are the advantages, plus the additional assets like the Lookbook templates uh, are available and the access source code is available as well. So have a look on that. If you have questions, please let us know. Uh, we know that the documentation could be better um, and we're trying to invest time on that. So you'll, you'll be more ready to start using these additional assets uh, in your day-to-day -day work as well. But I think that's it from my side. Mm -hmm.